The Thorn Press is absolutely delighted to be publishing this book. I believe it will do <coughs> extremely well and that the mainstream publishers don't always know what the reading public wants and sometimes the small presses can fill the gap. And so with that, I'll hand you over to Anne and let her tell you all about her book. Thank you very much indeed, Tessa. Thank you. And hello, everybody. It's really, really good to see you all here tonight. Um, I'm really glad that you could come here tonight to help me celebrate the, uh, the launch of The Master's Tale. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about how it all came about. Back in 2008, after a routine visit to the pilot's office in Southampton, my husband Peter came home with an extraordinary tale about Captain Smith and the Titanic. I was keen to see what he'd been looking at. So the office manager, Ron Hancock, who is here this evening, <coughs> very kindly invited me down. Out of a metal filing cupboard, Ron brought out a great leather-bound volume, the Dock Master's Logbook for 1912. This official document recorded the details of all ships entering and leaving the port of Southampton. He opened it to April, and there, in copper plate script, was Titanic's name, with that of her captain, Smith, departing at noon on April 10th. I shivered, knowing, as we all do, what was to happen just five days later. But then Ron turned the pages back to show us two previous entries, and what they suggested changed my whole perception of the Titanic tragedy. On March 30th, at six in the morning, just 11 days before Titanic set sail on her maiden voyage, the liner Olympic with her captain, Smith, was logged coming into Southampton from New York. I couldn't have said exactly why at the time, but it seemed odd. I remember thinking he hadn't had much time off before taking command of the new ship, but it was the next entry that set the hairs on my neck prickling. Just after midnight on April 4th, less than five days after arriving from New York on Olympic, Captain Smith was again logged inwards by the Southampton Dockmaster. This time the ship he brought in was Titanic from Belfast. We checked times and dates again. It didn't seem feasible. But this was a legal document and the facts were there before us. There are moments in every writer's life when the urge to tell a story comes with a great flash of insight. I felt the need to take up the case for Captain Smith, set the record straight. If I'd been a biographer, then I'd have written a biography. But as I'm a writer who can't help putting words into my characters' mouths, it had to be a novel. Second officer Lightoller, who had sailed with Captain Smith before and knew him well, describes him as tall, full-whiskered and broad, a man with a pleasant voice and ready smile. He was a great favourite, a first-class navigator and a man any officer would give his ears to sail under. I liked the sound of him. So I decided to tell the tale from his point of view, exploring his personal life as well as the events leading up to that maiden voyage. I hope I've done him justice. I'm sure he'd have been the first to say that, it, that luck had played a great part in his career. He'd risen from humble beginnings to, com to command the biggest ships in the world. Passengers dubbed him the Storm King because of his ability to work a ship through bad weather. They felt safe with him, as did his officers. That's why he was so popular. Sadly, his luck turned. Exactly 100 years ago today, on September 20th, 1911, there occurred an incident that set the whole Titanic tragedy in motion. RMS Olympic had just set sail from Southampton on her fifth voyage to New York. Commanded by Captain Smith, she was approaching the Solent when a small Royal Navy cruiser appeared, coming up from the Needles. HMS Hawk, just out of refit, 
and undergoing a speed trial was to prove his nemesis. <coughs> 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 